Honestly, you would think after 10 years I would have learned by now, that I would know better, that all of you would have learned by now and would have known better. And to be honest, we probably do. I think it's more so a hope and a dream and a wish than anything based off of any reality at this point in time that we think that at some point in time Vince McMahon and John Cena are actually going to do the right thing for the product, for the fans, for the John Cena character, for his potential opponents, for everybody involved. And that is not always have John Cena basically booked to be like fucking Superman, to be Super Cena, if you will. And, you know, I even talked about this before, Money in the Bank, how they couldn't have John Cena go over Kevin Owens. And I'll talk about it again in this video, the whole notion that when Kevin Owens wins, everybody benefits. When Cena wins, nobody, including John Cena, benefits. And I guess it's, it's the hope that Vince and John Cena have enough common sense and, more importantly, business sense to understand that this is the case. That their short-sighted, narrow-minded vision of what they always end up doing with the Cena character has hurt the Cena character, has hurt the product, has hurt the roster, has alienated fans, driven fans away, and all of this crap. But no, lo and behold, I knew, I just knew deep down inside that come Sunday at Money in the Bank, it was going to be the same old shit. And it was. And frankly, in a lot of ways, with Kevin Owens going over John Cena, it feels like it so often feels with the WWE and John Cena and Vince McMahon over the past decade, it feels like the company wastes my time. There's a lot of things that you can waste in this world. The most valuable commodity of all is time. We've all got only a certain amount of it, and it's all about what we do with it. So this company, in a lot of ways, I feel, has wasted my time over the past decade when it comes to the John Cena character, and Sunday Night was just another clear-cut example of them wasting my time and wasting your time and wasting others' time as well. And the whole reason is simply is because Vince McMahon and John Cena are out of fucking touch. They are. And these are the two big culprits here. It's Vince McMahon and it's John Cena. And at some point in time, you would have to hope that these asshats would snap out of their funk, would realize the error of their ways, and stop being so goddamn stubborn and out of touch and start to do things differently to affect real positive change for all parties involved up to and most especially importantly including John Cena and Vince McMahon. But I believe they'll do that when I see it. Let's start off with Vince McMahon though. The, the epitome of out of touch. You know, this whole notion that at any time John Cena happens to show even the least bit of vulnerability that you immediately have to get it back for him. The fact that you always have to sit there and make sure he gets his win back is completely and totally ridiculous. This whole notion that you have to always protect the top guy is stupid. If you have to go to such great lengths to always protect that top guy, then maybe he's not really a top guy after all. Because to me, by pure definition, that top guy should be able to overcome anything and should be able to make anything work, shouldn't need to be protected. He could be made to be as vulnerable as possible and still pull it off. The fact that Vince McMahon has to go to such great lengths to protect John Cena, frankly, in my opinion, should tell you all you need to know about John Cena's real status as the top guy of WWE. It's all smoke and mirrors and it's all bullshit. But you look at this, and it's just a ridiculous concept. I look at the NBA Finals with LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, LeBron has been spectacular. He's been magnificent in these finals. This is the best I've ever seen him play from an aggressiveness and mentality standpoint in the NBA Finals or in any playoff series or at any point in time in his entire career. And you look at it, if Vince McMahon was booking the NBA, Cleveland would have already won the series against Golden State and would have been in four straight games, or at worst, it would have been a five-game series. And the only way Golden State would have won a game, it would have been in game number three, and it would have become be just simply because of five blown ref calls in the past two minutes and somebody pulling down LeBron's shorts when he was trying to hit his last shot. 
That's ridiculous. But you look at it and you see LeBron James, and in fact, I would argue his appeal has never been higher. It's really hard at this point in time, even for those that want to hate on LeBron James and not like LeBron James, and I personally do not like LeBron James, even though there's a lot of reasons I should. I just find it hard to do so. But man, there's an incredible amount of respect level there for me with LeBron James. There's an appeal to LeBron James that frankly hasn't been there since he was playing at St. Vincent St. Mary's back when he was 17, 18 years old. And you think about it. If Vince McMahon was booking it, He's come back to Cleveland. He's back home. Vince would immediately have him win the NBA title. There's not a lot of story there. There's not a lot of appeal there. For an organization that's never won a championship, for a city that's lacked for a championship team for a very, very long time, you know, you gotten close. Make the people wait a little longer. How much greater is the payoff going to be maybe come next year or the year after when LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers do win the NBA championship? You look at how great the ratings are for the NBA Finals this year, the best ratings they've ever had on ABC, and the best ratings the Finals have ever had in theory since Jordan's Bulls team took on Malone and Stockton and the Jazz back in 98. And all the while, the best player in the league is about to lose the damn series. Is it bad for the brand of LeBron James? Is it bad for the brand of the NBA that their best player is about to lose in the finals? No, if anything, it increases the appeal. Because if LeBron James was going to sit there and just win the fucking NBA finals this year, then why the hell should anybody ever show up anyways? No Kyrie Irving, no Kevin Love, that depleted-ass team with that sorry-ass bench and scrubs all throughout the starting lineup. It would be too much. LeBron would be too good compared to everybody else. And as a result, it would actually hinder and hurt the LeBron James brand. It would hinder and hurt the NBA brand. Now, come next year, if the Cavaliers make it back to the NBA Finals, more people are going to want to watch based off of what they've seen this year in the NBA Finals and wanting to see if LeBron James can finally bring Cleveland that elusive championship. Now, this whole notion that you have to always protect the top guy is stupid, even like with Michael Jordan. And it got to the point in the late 90s where it got a little bit ridiculous with the protectionism of him. But part of the appeal of Michael Jordan throughout his career was the fact that, yeah, he ended up becoming the greatest player of all time. He won six NBA championships, but it took until the seventh year of his career in order to do that. Again, if Vince McMahon was booking Michael Jordan's path throughout the NBA, Michael Jordan would have come in and won it as a rookie and then won it again his second year. Maybe lost to the third year because he had three injuries and he couldn't overcome it, even though he scored like 300 points in game number seven. And then he would have won it again in the fourth year, the fifth year, the sixth year, and the seventh year. And by that point in time, people would have thought, this is bullshit. I'm tired of this. Michael Jordan is too good. And he was too good. But the whole point is, is this is the way that they booked John Cena. This whole notion that they always have to protect the top guy. LeBron's appeal is going to increase with people because of the vulnerabilities that he's going to show, even though he's been playing as well as he ever has in any big-time situation. Part of the appeal to Michael Jordan, in spite of all of his greatness and the great marketing campaigns and the Nike machine and the Gatorade machine and the NBA machine promoting him and advertising him and marketing him all behind him was the fact that there was a humanistic approach there. There was a bit of a relatability there because people could see this guy getting close to his dream, getting close to the ultimate goal, but falling short, but getting knocked down, getting backed up and all of that. You know, and again, it's this whole notion when you talk about having to protect the top guy, you know, John Cena hardly ever loses. Well, shit, even in the NFL, you know, teams that win the Super Bowl, in most years, they're going to win somewhere between, you know, it could be 9 or 10 games to 12 or 13 games. They're still losing anywhere between 20 to 40 to 45% of the regular season games. And these are the champions, the teams that end up hoisting the trophy, winning the game that ultimately matters the most. Imagine how boring it would be if every year the Super Bowl champion was 16-0. and 0. You could sit there by midway point of the season and say, hey, this is the only undefeated team. By God, they're going to have to win the Super Bowl. Why the fuck would you even watch? There's no appeal. There's no interest. There's no intrigue. This whole notion of having to protect the top guy is ridiculous. And again, if Cena was such a top guy, maybe you wouldn't have to protect him so much. And maybe part of the reason he's not the top guy that you proclaimed him to be is because you have protected him so much. 
Cena, in this whole argument that comes from Vince and the company's talking points, is that he makes the most money, so they have to protect him. He's the best for their business. He makes the most money compared to what? This is that ultimate bullshit argument, if there ever was one, from the WWE. John Cena makes the most money compared to who? Who have you really thrown out there as a legitimate contender to even see if that is legitimate over the past several damn years? You could sit there, and when we're talking about the WWE, we're talking about a company that is great when it comes to money and math manipulation. There is no question about it. This is the same company that actually tries to legitimately sell you on the fact that they have a half billion social media followers. Think about how ridiculous that notion is for a second. Think about it. It's all about money and math manipulation. Well, if you're sitting there and selling more John Cena merchandise via more avenues and making it more available at house shows and online and everywhere else than anybody else's, well, no shit. When you combine that with featuring the guy more than anybody else, having him go over more than anybody else, John Cena would be ridiculous if he didn't make the most money by a wide margin. He makes the most money compared to what? That's not a good argument. It's a bullshit argument because John Cena ultimately is a prop. He's not a money maker. John Cena is a tool for the WWE to make money. John Cena does not make money for the WWE. And that, to me, is an indisputable fact. Hulk Hogan made money for the WWF. Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, made bucket loads of money for the WWF slash WWE. The WWE makes money in part by using John Cena as a corporate prop. There is a difference and there is a big distinction. And then when it comes to Vince McMahon, you blast the younger generation, yet hold them back every stretch along the way. You talk about people not wanting to come up and grab that brass ring, not wanting it, but clearly when you see somebody like Kevin Owens, who is going for it, he's chasing it, he wants it, you do everything you can to yank the rug out from under him and hold him back. And furthermore, Vince, you talk about, and you've talked about it for a long time, how you're not wrestling, you're sports entertainment, you're more than that, and at the end of the day, you're in the business of making movies. If you're in the business of making movies, have you peeped your scripts when it comes to John Cena? If you ever tried to actually take this and sell this to Hollywood, they would throw this back at you and say, this is the biggest disgrace I've ever fucking seen. What a goddamn joke. Why would anybody want to come to see this hero when this hero acts more like the villain because he ultimately is the obstacle and he has no challenges or barriers to overcome? I mean, think about how ridiculous this is. This is a typical program involving Cena. Cena wins the first match. Cena wins the second match. Cena wins the third match. Why would anybody give a fuck? Or, let's say, Cena loses because of disqualification, count-out, or interference. Then the second time around, he wins. And then he wins again. Or, in this case, let's even take Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens managed to win the first time. I don't know how the fuck that happened. Just so that way, he could make John Cena look that much better when he beat him the second time. And now, you know, probably Cena's going to beat him again. And perhaps even again. How is that good fucking movie making? How is that making good television? And how is Cena beating everyone a wise decision? How is Cena always winning good storytelling? Again, when I talk about this company over the past decade, a lot of times it feels like this company has wasted my time. And it's a direct reflection of what Vince McMahon has done with John Cena and the John Cena character. If I know that this guy is always going to win, why would I bother caring? If I know that this guy is always going to win, why would I bother getting invested in anything that he does from an emotional or intellectual standpoint? And furthermore, from a company standpoint and from Vince McMahon, who should be smart enough, you would think, to be able to see the bigger picture, how is one guy being so dominant over everybody such a good idea? Because at some point in time, you run out of opponents. At some point in time, you run out of guys that you could make money with for this guy. Furthermore, if something happens where this one guy that you've pumped everything in is all of a sudden out of action for six months, nine months, a year, then what the fuck do you do? And furthermore, looking at it from a money standpoint and a business standpoint, how can you possibly justify continuing to put John Cena in this spot based off of the last decade for this company from a bottom line standpoint. Ratings have done this over the past decade. It's not like your live event attendance is kick-ass. It's not like you're drawing huge subs of money. 
you know, especially compared to what you should be drawing based off of many different factors. How in the blues to blue fucks can you even justify putting this guy in this spot? He's nothing more than a prop for you. And eventually at some point in time, you would think you'd get bored with that prop and find a new one. But for whatever reason, I don't know if Cena gives him the best blowjobs in the fucking world, but Vince McMahon just can't get enough of this guy. But it's not just Vince, it's Cena too. And newsflash to the John Cena defenders. If every other top guy is a politician and selfish, then what the fuck does that make John Cena? John Cena has been at the top of this company longer than anybody else in history. In history. Maybe not named Bruno San Martino. Okay, fair fucking enough. But San Martino was a fucking politician too. People always want to talk about Hogan and his politics. You're goddamn right he was a politician. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold. Hell, even The Undertaker's a politician to a certain degree. You don't get to that spot without being a politician. And this whole notion that somebody like John Cena doesn't have say-so over his character or final say-so, at this point in time, because he's been there for so long and Vince McMahon has this incessant fucking man crush on him, John Cena, you best believe, no matter what bullshit anybody tries to spin at you, has ultimate and final say-so over any creative direction for his character, even if it's not in his fucking contract. If Cena wants to do it, it will happen. If John Cena doesn't want to do it, it will not happen, period. Furthermore, so many of you that will talk about the company and one of the worst things about it is the fact that they've struggled to create new stars and there's a lack of new stars. Wasn't that a direct reflection of the guy that's been at the top for the past 8 to 10 years that's blown through all of those new fresh faces? Can we now see a direct correlation here between Cena's time at the top, along with other factors, and the lack of new stars being created? And furthermore, when it comes to this whole notion of John Cena actually puts people over plenty at an important times. Bullshit. Because more often than not, when Cena does put somebody over, there's always some bullshit, there's always some gimmick, there's always some fucking excuse. And furthermore, this is showing you how weak that argument is. When you have to bring up fucking Carlito, you're making my point for me. And there are still people to this day when they talk about Cena putting somebody over clean, they bring up fucking Carlito! Carlito! When the hell was the last time he even wrestled with the damn company? That's your defense mechanism. Oh, he put over CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. No. When he put over Daniel Bryan, it was because he had to go away for a couple months to have surgery, and that's the only fucking reason. When he put over CM Punk, it was only because John Cena wanted to make himself look better, and he saw CM Punk as a device to make himself money. You know, people are fed to Cena and the Cena monster, and then they get destroyed. Ask Wade Barrett how that goes. Ask Ryback how that goes. Ask Bray Wyatt how that goes. Ask Rusev how that goes. If they're not careful, ask Kevin Owens how that's going to fucking go. How is people working with Cena good for them and good for their careers? Yeah, they get to a certain point. They get that short-term run with the guy. Then what the fuck happens? And no, you're not elevated because you work with fucking Cena. The company only builds you up so that way they can feed you to fucking Cena. What the fuck happens to them afterwards? And you asshats that continue to perpetuate this ridiculousness fail to ever answer this. Oh, Rusev worked four fucking plus matches with John Cena and had all this run with him. And what the fuck did that do for him? After a bullshit win at Fastlane, it's loss, loss, fucking loss. How does that not hurt the credibility of Rusev? How does that not put the Rusev character in a situation where they have to do something to dramatically change them? How is that possibly good for the Rusev character in any fucking way? Furthermore, how is it good for the Cena character if he's always going over all the so-called obstacles to the point where he himself is the obstacle and acts like the villain and acts like the fucking bully? Stop using this bullshit excuse about how Cena elevates people. No, people are elevated just to be fed to Cena, so that way they'll be spit back out and the company doesn't give a fuck about it. This is a long lineage of people that this applies to. And then we get to John Cena itself. Beyond the ridiculousness of his defenders is the man himself. You know, you would think that John Cena, somebody who claims to understand the history of professional wrestling, know the history of professional wrestling, love the history of professional wrestling and love professional wrestling himself and somebody who's been doing it for 15 plus years now would be smart enough to understand that when it comes to professional wrestling as with many other things 
You're only as strong as your weakest link. Furthermore, the other person is every bit as important as you, if not more important than you. Yet somewhere along the way, Vince McMahon, and as a consequence as well, John Cena have lost sight of this. It always comes back to Cena. It's always about Cena. We've always got to protect Cena. We've always got to do this for Cena. All the while, you're forgetting about this other guy that when you elevate him, elevates you as well. And things are even better. And you can make even more fucking money. This business is about making money, not just winning. And this whole notion of having Cena always win being the way to make the most money is completely and totally ridiculous. How much more money is there to be made if Cena actually, God forbid, came out on the short end of the stick once or twice? How much more money is there to be made if you come back to that at some point in time and then Cena could get his back? There's still money to be made between Brock Lesnar and John Cena because Brock Lesnar didn't end up jobbing out like a bitch to John Cena in 2014-2015. That's a fact. You could always go back to that and you can make money off of that. But you can't make money off of going back to John Cena and Wade Barrett. There's no money to be made now in John Cena and Ryback. There's no money to be made in John Cena and Bray Wyatt, John Cena and Rusev. Why? Because nobody will believe it. And if nobody believes and nobody feels like they Cena needs them, then you're not making any money. There's no reason to get emotionally, intellectually invested. And there's no reason to make a monetary investment, period. John Cena fails to understand this. And apparently he's tweeting about you're never too old to learn. Well, apparently he's never fucking learned that the best way to make yourself look good, again, is by making others look good. This is something for years I used to see Randy Orton do quite a bit. Within three minutes of a big match, I would know whether or not he was going over. And the reason I say that is, is because when Randy Orton was booked to lose, his effort was half-assed. He wasn't really making sure that the other guy got his spots in. Orton's effort for his shit was kind of lackadaisical. Because if the other guy was going over, what the fuck did Randy Orton care? He wasn't going to make that guy look as good as possible, so he was just going to handbag it. But God forbid, if you knew Randy Orton was going to go over, which was consistently happening, you knew that Randy Orton was going to make sure that he was on point, that he was working his ass off, he was getting all of his shit in. But furthermore, he was going to really make sure that that other guy got all his shit in, so that way that guy would look really good, so that way when Randy Orton won, he looked even better. But the problem is with John Cena... He makes himself look good by making himself look good. And this is stupid, and this is ridiculous, and this is no way to do fucking business. The only way to get more money is to make that opponent as good as you, if not better than you. That other person means everything. You've got to have that right dance partner. And for so long, John Cena hasn't had the right dance partner because of what Vince McMahon and John Cena fucking do with the John Cena character. And furthermore, from John Cena's standpoint, seriously ask yourself, who the fuck are you going to make money with in the future? Think about how hard it is now to even come up with opponents for John Cena. That's why I don't like that U.S. title open challenge that they do because so many of these other guys he's just going to blow through and it's just further diminishing the people that he could potentially feud with at some point in time. I mean, seriously. If you always go over everybody and you always get the better end of it on everybody, then why in the fuck would anybody pay in the future to see you face anybody? Furthermore, who in the fuck would you even have to face in the future that you could make money with? I mean, if this guy loves the business so much, maybe it's time he starts acting like it. Many it's time for him to stop acting like the selfish brat that he fucking is. And that's exactly what John Cena is, is a selfish, egotistical motherfucker, period. Period. And his actions through his character on screen in the ring over the past decade clearly indicate that. Which would you rather have, John? Would you rather sit there and stubbornly cling to your spot with a diminishing return for all parties involved for the next three years and make less and less money? Or would you rather sit there and do what's good, not so much just for you, but for all parties involved and help others and make others so that way you have more star power, which means the company in general is making more money, which ding dong, dumb dick, means you're making more fucking money. And you can extend your career at the top still, 
by an extra three, five, seven fucking years. Of course, John Cena, like so many others, is one of those individuals that gets so caught up in his bullshit, has his head so far buried up his ass, if not Vince McMahon's ass, that he's blinded by his own bullshit and character and stupidity and can't see the greater good, can't see what's out there. You just can't. I mean, and you look at this whole thing with Kevin Owens at Money in the Bank. You've got Kevin Owens coming out, talking all this shit, and then he backs it up at Elimination Chamber. Now there's interest there. Can Kevin Owens beat John Cena again? Can John Cena actually find a way to beat this guy? John Cena's done all of this. He has all of these past accolades. And now this guy walks in his first major match in WWE at a special event, and he beats the man. He beats the franchise piece. So now you've got people wondering. And now two weeks later come Money in the Bank. You have two options. You can have Kevin Owens go over again in some way, shape, or form, which helps Kevin Owens' character and his credibility and helps validate him and continues to build on that momentum that he has already amassed. It helps the John Cena character because now people are really wondering if John Cena can actually go over. They will actually pay money after those two really good matches to see what John Cena and Kevin Owens could do a third time around. And they might actually want to start getting behind John Cena because now he's actually showing some vulnerabilities. So it's good for the John Cena character. It's good for Vince McMahon and the WWE because now they're going to have more people interested, more people potentially tuning in, more people potentially subscribing to the WWE Network for the first time because they want to see either Kevin Owens go over John Cena again or they want to see if John Cena can actually find a way to beat Kevin Owens. And it's good for the fans, too, because it's not the fucking colossal waste of time that this company so often has been for the past 10 years, and most certainly the John Cena character has been. The bottom line is, at Money in the Bank, you only had one option. With some way, shape, or form, Kevin Owens going over. Because when Kevin Owens goes over, everybody wins. And it's not just even Owens and Cena. It's the rest of the roster, too. Now if a Kevin Owens goes over, you're building up this guy. You could sit there during your commentary talk about, I haven't seen anybody this dominate against Cena since a Brock Lesnar. Now you're planting the seeds for him and Lesnar at some point in time. You're building this guy up so that way you could have him face off with guys like Reigns and Ambrose at some point in time. Maybe Seth Rollins at some point in time. Bray Wyatt at some point in time. Everybody fucking benefits. So of course Vince McMahon and John Cena, these fucking idiots... Do the same old bullshit, Cena wins, LOL, and nobody fucking benefits. Kevin Owens' character most certainly doesn't benefit, and no, having him wipe out Cena after he already fucking lost doesn't help the character at all, and no, Cena not showing up on Raw doesn't help in any way, shape, or form, because it's not John Cena selling the injury for the benefit of Kevin Owens, it's John Cena selling the injury for the benefit of John Cena, so that way the next time they wrestle, he can fucking go over and he can say, I overcame all of this and I still won, even though the guy is the fucking barrier and the obstacle. So it doesn't help Owens, and it doesn't help Cena, because again, it's the same old shit. Why would people ever care to really get behind the guy, ever feel like the guy really needs their help? Why would people get intellectually or emotionally invested in any passionate form at all if they just think, oh, he's just going to get it fucking back? Why the fuck would I care? It doesn't help the other roster. It doesn't help Vince McMahon. It doesn't help the company as a whole. It doesn't help the fans. It doesn't fucking help any goddamn buddy. At some point in time, this selfish shit has to stop. Ten years now. Ten blessed years. Enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Ding dong, Vince McMahon. Ding dong, John Cena. Ding dong, you two colossal dumb dicks. The way you've done shit for years doesn't work. It's not good. It's toxic to the John Cena character, to the rest of the roster, the WWE brand, to the fan base, to your overall business and bottom fucking line. How the hell can you not see that? It's time to shake shit up. And it feels like a broken record always having to talk about this, but it's how stupid and out of touch Vince and Cena truly are. The two biggest obstacles and barriers to positive change and improvement and growth in the WWE as a company and their product as a whole are clearly Vince and Cena. You have 10 years of history to show you that. I don't know what much more needs to be said. 
what they did at Money in the Bank was completely and totally fucking ridiculous, but ultimately predictable, and what a surprise. It wasted everybody's time.